A low voice said to me as I felt a gentle rubbing sensation on my shoulder. I sighed with content as my eyes slowly opened to see my loving husband looking back at me, a warm smile on his face. Happy Mother's Day, Velvet, he told me, leaning in and giving me a soft kiss on my forehead. Thank you, Nightlight, I replied as I sat up and stretched my arms with a yawn, long yawn. You're already dressed. Well, I did have to prepare your breakfast, you know. I wanted to go a little bigger than last year, so I can't serve it to you in bed, unfortunately. That's all right, honey. I chuckled, levitating my robes over to me as I got out of bed. I don't mind. I'm sure breakfast will be lovely regardless. With my robe, I slipped on and tied. I walked out to the dresser drawer by the wall and picked up my brush, trying to tame my mane at least a little bit before going downstairs. I never, I was never one to keep my bed head for too long. I looked down at the picture frame on the dresser as I brushed my mane, smiling at the various memories captured in each photo, Shining Armor's wedding, Twilight's coronation, and two family pictures outside Shining's castle in the Crystal Empire and Twilight's castle in Ponyville. I love all my kids, Spike and Cadence included, and I cherish every moment we spend together as a family. You know, it was a lot easier to get the family together when they were just students. I sighed. Now they have all these responsibilities, and it's even harder for them to set aside for us. Life was a lot simpler then, when they were younger, wasn't it? Nightlight said, walking up behind me, gently rubbing my shoulders. At least we can have some luck with Twilight every now and then, but it's near impossible with Shining these days, I lament picking up the family photo of us outside his castle. The Crystal Empire is so far away, and he has his wife to think about on top of that, of an entire kingdom. Nightlight bow brought his face over to mine and gazed, gave me a loving nuzzle. I know the kids couldn't be here this year, but I promise to make the, this the best Mother's Day ever. He vowed, ended with a soft kiss on my cheek. I laughed lightly, appreciating his effort. I'll hold you to that promise. With a smile, Nightlight gently grasped my hand and said, Let's head downstairs before your breakfast gets cold, okay? I nod gently, letting him lead me down to the bedroom and sit it and towards the stairs. I noticed that something strange skipped in his step and he was humming to himself as we walked down the hallway. My muzzle contro contorted into a sly grin when we reached the staircase. You must be very proud of what you prepared for me. Eh, a little bit, he shrugged. You'll be really impressed this time, I giggled. It was cute the way night I tried to outdo himself every year. I'm sure it'll be delicious, whatever it is. His poorly ex hidden excitement was adorable. But, to be completely honest, my husband's cooking was, oh, what's a nice way to put it, below average. Still, I always kept a smile on my face, and he was getting better each year. Who was I to make him feel bad? As they say, it's the thought that counts, and besides, his cooking was nowhere near as bad as, as my mother's. A chill ran up my spine whenever I think about it. As long as my sh nightlight doesn't drop to that level, I'm good. When I reached the bottom of the stairs, the sweet aroma of a freshly prepared breakfast wafted up my nostrils. I was surprised at how good it smelled. I was, I wondered, if Nightlight had been practicing behind my back, 
This smells good. Really good, honey. I pride him. Fully chuckled and escaped him. If you think it smells good, wait until you see it. His pace picked up to the point where he was borderline pulling me, and it only made me more eager to see what he had in store for me. And then we rounded the corner, and I was taken aback by what I saw. Surprise! A green flame flew upwards, spelt, spelling out the word surprise, and I followed it down to see that it was coming from a familiar purple pr dragon, accompanied by three even more familiar ponies. Happy Mother's Day! They all cheered, and I was rendered speechless, leaning on nightlight for support. Twilight, Spike, Cadence, and Shining Armor. My kids, they all came to see me. I continued to stare at them happily, welling up inside me, and a huge permanent smile plastered onto my face. Um, I think we broke her, Twilight, said the dragon. Well, she wasn't exactly expecting company over, Spike. My daughter giggled. It's only natural that she'd be... My babies! I screamed, rushing over and practically tackling as many of them as I could with a hug. T tears running down my cheek. I missed you guys so much. I thought you weren't going to be here. Well, surprise, Caden said, wiping my tears away with her wings. You guys told me you were too busy to visit this year. How did you, you all plan this? I asked. We didn't, Shining at Armor had answered. Dad did. I blinked and turned to look at Shining Arm at Nightlight, who had adverted his gaze from me. You, you planned this? He shrugged nervously. Well, I didn't really do much. I was just worried that the kids would be swamped with work, so I asked them to make plans six months in advance. I turned back to my children and gave them a stern look. So all that talk about not being here, able to come over? Twilight blushed and scratched her cheek. Sorry, Mom, but Dad wanted it to be a surprise. Her voice trailed off, unsure of how to finish that thought. Hmm. If you were living under my roof, I'd have grounded you all for lying to me. Eh, I wouldn't call it lying. My oldest son spoke up. Oh, really? Then what would you call it, shining armor? Misdirection? I shook my head with a smile. My little shiny had always been terrible at making up excuses. Nightlight walked over to the rest of us and putting his arms around me. Oh, well now that we're all here, let's eat. Breakfast had been served and we were all gathered around the dinner table, dining table, with me sitting at the head. So be honest with me, Nightlight. Who made all of this? I asked. Well... She'll know if you're lying, Dad, Caden said, warned before he could answer. She knows me so well. Okay, I didn't make the breakfast, he admitted. Spike and Cadence took care of it. <laughs> that sounds more like a little more realistic, I said, pouring some syrup on the pancakes. If that's the case, though, how long have you, you all been here? We actually got here late last night while you were sleeping, Spike exclaimed. After we spent the night, Cadence and I got her up early and making to make breakfast. Well, that was very sweet of you two. Don't mention it, Mom, said my daughter-in-law. We were more than happy to do it. Do you like it? Spike said, asked, eager to hear the voice what I thought of the meal, and he helped make it for me. I took a moment to swallow a hash brown before answering, it's delicious. 
Well, we couldn't let Dad cook for you again, Twilight chuckled. Well, I'll have you know that your mother loves my cooking, Nightlight grunted with a folding arms before turning his head towards me. Don't ya, Velvet? There was a short pause. Yes, dear, I said, immediately taking a sip of orange juice afterwards, and the kids looked at each other incredulously. Shining shook his head, and she wanted to ground us for lying. <laughs> I heard that. I said with a narrow eyes, my son rubbing his shoulders, where the, the little spark of my magic hit him. I love my son, but he could be sometimes have a smart mouth. My daughter giggled at his small misfortune, and he slouched, slouched in his chair as he continued to eat. Sorry. Could be worse, Spike shrugged. We could be eating Grandma's cooking. A collective shudder ran through all of us. Please, please don't mention that at the table, Spike. I groaned, and my fo attention focused on my daughter-in-law. So, Cadence, how's Project Grandfalls coming along? I asked with a grin. I heard Twilight spit out her juice. <coughs> <coughs> Project what? Eh, uh, not so well, really, Cadence admitted. I let out a disappointed sigh. You've been making good use of the books you requested me from me. Oh, yeah. Trust me, we may not have gotten much luck so far, but it's not from lack of trying. My Royal Guard training helps me with my stamina, Shining said proudly. Twilight, on the other hand, was grow growing agitated. Really, guys? At the table? Spike's here, you know. It is a little inappropriate, Velvet. Nightlight agreed. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. You two are so alike. Don't be such prudes. Spike is a growing drake. We can't just shelter him all his life. I took another sip of orange juice inside. Besides... I already had the talk with him the last time he and Twilight came to visit. What? My daughter shouted, and she immediately turned the spike. Why didn't you tell me this? I didn't think it was important to tell you, he shrugged. Honestly, Twilight, you shield him too much, I told her. I know that big six I know that big sister instincts want you to keep him safe, but you aren't doing him any favors. She groaned in defeat, knowing that she couldn't argue with me. Well, you already told him, so I guess that there really isn't anything I can do about it now. She looked at her big brother. So aside from Project Grand Foles, what else have you been up to, Shiny? Not much. I'm just waiting for Killer Combat 10 to come out next week. He answered, my eyes perked at the mention of that game. Oh yeah! Spike cheered. I've been waiting since last summer to get it! Who says you're getting it? Twilight interjected. She then glanced over to me and I gave her a look. Oh come on, Mom! Have you seen the stuff in that game? It's way too violent for someone Spike's age to play. More violent than your fight with Tirak? He grumbled. He's got you there. Caden snickered. That was totally different. Twilight defended. I was fighting for the sake of Equestria. That game is just for violence. For the sake of shock value. Oh, what's the harm in it? Shining asked. The kid's smart enough to know the difference between reality and video games. I'm still not letting him buy it. Young Stallion rolled his eyes and looked over at the young little Drake. Don't worry, Spike. I'll let you play my copy of the game whenever you visit me and Cadence. Shining! Really? Spike asked, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Green, his big green eyes. You're the best Shining Armor. Anything for my little bro. He said, with a thumbs up, Twilight folded her arms 
letting out an audible growl, growl of dissatisfaction, and I giggle a little at the reaction. She could only shield Spike so much, but I suppose that's a lesson she'll have to learn on her own eventually. Hopefully, she'll learn it before she becomes a parent. Thanks for the loving breakfast, kids. I sigh, rubbing my belly as I slouch my chair. Don't mention it, Mom! Caden smiled. That's just the beginning, though. We've got a lot more planned for you. I raise my eyebrows. Oh, really? Twilight stood up and nodded her head excitedly. Cadence and I were, are taking you to a spa this afternoon. And then, and then, we're all taking you out for dinner tonight. That sounds great, girls. I laughed. <laughs> Lightly, as I stood up slowly, not wanting to upset my full stomach. Before I get ready to go, I need to talk to Shining for a bit. My oldest son looked at me with wide eyes. Um, okay? He said, unsure of what I wanted, but immediately standing up as I motioned him for him to follow me. I led Shining Armor down the hall in the room leading to the basement and out of the corner of his eyes, I could see the hairs of his mane and tail standing on end. What's wrong? I asked, looking at him. The concern frowns. Nothing, just a little nervous. He answered. Usually, when two ponies head to a basement by their s themselves, it's usually not for something good. I rolled my eyes and lit up my horn, undoing the magical lock on the door. Some ponies been watching too many horror movies. Well, he murmured guiltily. Either that, or you've been watching too some kinky adult films with Cadence. I tease. Quit it, Mom. Oh, sh relax, Shiny. You know I'm just joking. It's all in good fun. Hmm. Fun for you, maybe. I narrow my eyes at him. Again. Excuse me? Nothing. I thought so. You know, you and Dad never let me and sh Twilight down here. Was there... Even a reason for that, he asked. It was mo mostly because your father kept a model replica of the first EUP guard base, I explained. He always comes down here from the time to time to fiddle with it, sometimes reenacting important events from their history, I chuckled. You're a lot like him that way. And what with all the action figures you collected when you were a cult? They're action figures. That's what I said. He paused. <coughs> oh, I'm just conditioned. Shouldn't correct people because they're always calling them dolls. That's the second thing you have in common with your dad. You actually keep counting the things I have in common with him? Why not? I asked. There's only three. So little? Yeah. There's the action figures, your sensitivity to having them referred to as dolls, and of course, I looked over to him and ruffled his manes, your hard-headed bravery. He laughed and grabbed my hand firmly, yet gently and removed it from his head. I couldn't help but mess with his mane every now and then, even if he did end up growing to be three inches taller than me. Are you trying to say... I... I'm more like you than Dad? He asked. I smirked. You have no idea how alike we are. We reached the door at the far end of the basement. And when I opened it, I switched the light on and revealed something that would prove my point. An old arcade cabinet? He asked with a confused look. Does it still work? Mm-hmm. Why don't you look and see what game is in it? Shining walked over to the ancient machine and examined the game's logo on the top, only for him to turn him around and look at me with wide eyes and a gaping 
mouth. This is the original Killer Combat? He exclaimed. You played this game? Eh, I dabbled a little. How in Equestria did you get this? I knew a guy. He collected old arcade machines and he owed me a favor. So he gave me this. I I can't believe this, Shining said, trying to proceed, process what he just learned. But why are you showing me this? I walked up beside him, dusting off the controllers with my hand. Well, it's Mother's Day, so I was wondering if you'd treat me to a match. I paused. Don't expect it to be like the newer games, though. My son puffed his chest up proudly, unfazed by what he's, I said. I'll have you know, mother. What? That I have the original killer combat on my Nay Station 4. So, I already know how the game works. Ha- Who? <coughs> Who did you think you were dealing with? Don't get ahead of yourself, youngsters. This isn't some cheap, cheap console port. This is the original, genuine article. You can't replicate something like this. We'll see about that, old mare. I would zap you for that comment, but the flink whooping you're about to get should be fitting punishment. You doubt my skills, mama, mommy dearest? I reached around the back of the cabinet, feeling f around for the power switch. Well, I'll just have to put those skills to the test. And I'm going to put an A++ or fall flat on your ASS, I quipped, flipping the machine on, and the screen lit up for the first time in a long time while. By long while, I meant about a week. KILLER COMBAT! The in-game announcer yelled as the title screen appeared. Then it faded to black, and a new caption showed up. SELECT YOUR pl CHARACTER! I hummed musically to myself as I went through the character list. Let's see, who shall I serve you with? Well, I know who I'm going I'm going with my main guy, Shining said. Timberwolf. Timberwolf, huh? I know just who, who to use against you. Deadly Gust. Here we go, my son said, with a fire in his eyes as he gulped, gripped the joystick, his eyes to the ground as he mumbled to himself. I could tell he was mentally going over all of Timberwolf's combos and special moves. I'm disappointed, Shining. If he's your main guy, you should have all his moves committed to memory. Good luck, sweetie. I giggled. Round one. Our eyes focus on the screen as our characters walk onto the stage. Timberwolf lets out a loud roar. His half pony, half timber wolf body, tearing most of his clothes to shreds, while deadly gusts readied her bladed fans. She was having. She may have looked like a daintily Pegasus, but she was quite. But she quacked. But she packed quite a, the punch, as my dear Shining would f soon find out. There was no room for mercy. Shining armor was precious to me, and he always will be, but I still had my pride. Deadly Gust was my best character, an extension of myself. She and I go way back, and I wasn't about to go easy on Shining just because he was my son. Ready. Fight! <coughs> Immediately, Timberwolf charged at me, his tremendous speed being no surprised, as he was one of the fastest characters in the game. I, however, had a trick up my sleeve. With a quarter, with a quick quarter circle on the joystick, I teleported behind the wild hybrid and threw a fan at him. 
The blade, that weapon, elacidated a pathetic howl from him. On impact, as pixelated blood splurted from him. You know, Shining, just because your character is a mindless beast, doesn't mean you have to play like one. I laughed. <laughs> you think that's funny, huh? He asked. Well, let's see how he acts like this. Timberwolf jumped back into the air, trying to come at me with an overhead attack. I wouldn't telegraph your move like that if I were you. I pulled another quick calm command and waved my fan in front of him. A wind of gust, a vortex that caught Timberwolf before he could reach me. I chuckled as he flailed about helplessly. In a brief moment of panic, Shining wiggled the joystick and pressed another button he could, could to try to escape. Only for it all to be in vain with his character immobilized, I hit him with another uppercut, and he fell down. I caught him with several kicks, starting up a combo. No, 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 no! Shining shrieked as he could do nothing, but watch as I shove, showed him absolute no mercy. Come on, just let me fall, I pleaded. Ha, and break my chain? You wish. I chuckled my combo as more pixels of blood came out of Timberwolf, his health bar getting lower and lower while mine hadn't, didn't have a scratch on it. I ended the combo with a kick to the chest, sending my challenger flying with a tiny bit of health left. 63, 63 hits, godlike combo. <coughs> 63 hits. Godlike combo. The impact when Timberwolf hit the ground was enough to bump off the last bit of health, and the announcer yelled, "Deadly cost! Deadly gust wins! Full, flawless victory!" I took a moment to get the kinks out of my fingers before putting them back onto my controller. Still hope that for that A plus plus. Shining's face grew red, in a combination of anger and humiliation. Whatever. You get- you just got me off guard. That's all, trust me, the next rounds are all mine. If that helps you sleep at night, I shrugged. Round two, fight! <coughs> Once again, Timberwolf charged right at me. Shining armor obviously not learning a thing from the last round. Nothing a simple fan throw can fix. I flicked the joy and pressed the light punch button, launching both of him, my weapons towards him. Nice try, Shining said as he made his character slide under my fans into me, knocking me down off my feet, then catching me in a flurry of claw slashes. I cursed under my breath as Timberwolf's claws tore into me. I ended the combo of a jump kick to the stomach that sent me flying across the stage. Twenty hits! Beastly combo! Hmm. Rather fitting, considering who pulled the combo off. I grunted as I waited for Deadly Gust to get up. Don't think you're safe just because you have a distance. Without warning, I teleport over the Timberwolf, immediately closing the gap between us. I am me I started up another combo, his health bar dropping as my hit count rose. 5, 10, 15. I should keep this combo up short before he tries to do a COMBO BUSTER! I slammed my fist against the tape, but as Timberwolf broke my string of hits, pushing me back against him, from him, taking a bite out of my health bar in the process. Shining Armor took advantage of his character's speed and caught me in the air before I hit the ground, starting up another combo. Eleven hits! Ultra Combo! 
Sweet sweat began to roll down my forehead as I tried to maintain the, my distance and regroup. But when I took looked at my health bar, I barely had any le health left. It was too late to go on for defense. With, with, a, with a defeated sigh, I stood motionless as Timberwolf took me out, winning Shining Armor of the Round. Timberwolf wins. <coughs> Fatality. See, I'm a lot better than you give me credit for. Shiny boosted, boasted, looking at me with a cocky grin. I glanced over to him, opening my mouth to say something back, but I was surprised at the fire I saw in his eyes. His breathing was heavier than usual, and he was sweating even more than me. He was trying not to show it, but I could tell he was being pushed. At that moment, he wanted nothing more than to beat me. It had been decades since I was saw that fire in another player. It was perfectly fine, though, because my desire to win was just as strong as his. While the, this wasn't the most challenging match I've had, it was definitely turning out to be the most fun. We both looked back at the screen. Both of our fighters were up and ready, and I let out a deep breath as the announcers yelled, Final round! Ready! Fight! <coughs> Most of the last round was a blur to me. All I could think about was keeping my combos up, breaking shinings whenever he got one started. Neither of us could get a combo of over five hits before having it busted. I lost count of how many times the announcers yelled, C -c 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 combo breaker <coughs> Our eyes were getting tired, practically mine, particularly mine, as my vision began to blur a little. The sweat on my palms made my control slippery, and I started to suffer for it. Shining started to land longer combos. My health was dropping fast as a result. For a moment, I thought that I was going to lose, but I heard a dreadful sound. Danger! Danger! <coughs> my eyes widened when I saw how low my health was, and I looked to see Timberwolf charging at me. Okay, Velvet, I thought. There is no way you're going to lose this match. The foul gloves are off are coming off. I took a split second to wipe my hands on my robe and put them back onto the controls as Timberwolf, mere steps away from me, shining smile devilishly, gotcha. He said as his character's claws made contact, <coughs> but his expression turned from cocky to horrifying instantly. With a quick command, I grabbed Timberwolf by the arms and threw him across the stage, sending both of my fans after him. While my weapons tore into the beasts, I teleported behind him and gave one last hit for good measure. No, 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 no! Shiny yelled as his health dropped to zero. <coughs> I was so close! I was going to win! I let out a labored chuckle as I relaxed my arms, my victory finally secured. End him! <coughs> the announcer commanded, and I grabbed the controls one last time with malicious intent. Down, back, back, forward, heavy punch! I fought as I did. Each input, a sinister smile. Tuned. A sinister tune played as the stage darkened. My son and I watched as Deadly Gust jumped back and threw her fans at Timberwolf, one going for each head and the other going for his legs. He let out a howl as he dropped. 
he was chopped to pieces, the fans returning <coughs> to their wielder. As she stuck, struck with immense and intimidated pose, a deadly gust, fatal blow. Shit. Shining ground grumbled. But he then he looked over at me with nervous eyes. Oh, sorry. I chuckled. I'll let it slide. I put my arms around him and pulled him close to me, giving him a loving nuzzle. <coughs> Good game, Shiny. He smiled and hugged me back. We youngsters say, GG, Mom. Well, sorry if I'm not up to date to the latest gamer jargo. Again, up for another match? No, I think I'm good, he said, scratching his cheek with his eyes looking away from me. How'd you get so good at this game, though? I mean, it's supposed, uh, it's surprising enough that you e are even into it. But to think about that you have this much skills. I looked over to the light switch and turned on the light on the back of the room, revealing a set of framed photographs on the walls, along with a shelf lined with trophies. Does this answer your question? I saw stars in my son's eyes, and he rushed over to the photo to look closer, looking to take a look, closer look at him. No way, he said excitedly, paying particularly attention to a young mare wearing a red hoodie. Is that you? I sighed in reminiscence as I walked up to his side. It sure is. I played killer combat competitively in college. I was known as Crimson Sickle. Didn't you go to Canterlot Literary University? That's one of the last places I'd think of that ha would have a gaming scene. Ha! Who said I played against students from there? On the weekends, I went down to the community college and played there. Really? He paused. Why did you go that far? Well, you know that your grandparents on the, my side of the family was pretty strict, I told him, and he nodded in agreement. They wanted me to focus to... They wanted my focus to be solely on studies. But a part of me knew I didn't want, didn't find some way to blow off, I'd go crazy. So when the first killer combat game came out, I gave it a go, and I've been playing ever since. In a way, it's my first love. I snickered. Don't tell your father. I said that so. <laughs> Shining made a zipping motion in front of his mouth, silently promising to keep his lips sealed. His silly gesture makes me gil giggle. Thank you for playing with me against me, son. This was the, definitely the most memorable Mother's Day I've ever had. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed beating the snot out of me, Ma. Actually, you did better than I expected. I f admitted. I thought it wouldn't would have been all easy to beat you. But you put up a good fight. A few more months of practice and you'll be as good as me. Does that mean you're going to let me have the game? He asked, ears perking up and a smile on his face. I scoffed. Not in a million years. Aw, oh, come on. Tell you what. I said, putting a hand on his shoulder. Next time you come to visit me, we'll play a game, and if you beat me, then I'll let you have the game. My son groaned. Well, I guess that's fair. I can practice at the, this game before Killer Combat 10. Maybe I'll invest in a nay station so I can kick your butt. In so I'll kick your ass in that game also. We'll see, Mom. We'll see. He smirked. Now let's head upstairs. You have to get ready for the spa appointment. Mother's Day isn't over yet. Maybe we could play another match after you get home from dinner tonight. I'd like that, Shining. And maybe I'll teach you. How a real player uses Timberwolf, I said as we walked out of the room and towards the basement sta stairs, my son wrapping his arms around me as we made our way up 
we could probably have Spike join in. Two protégés are always better than one. Sounds good. Shining agreed. Just don't tell Twilight. <laughs>